In the last video, we looked at how uh, electrons can only exist at certain uh, discrete energy levels within the atom. Uh, they can't really exist at any, anything beneath that, they just fall down to the shell uh, below that. Uh, and what we have here is the spectral transitions for atomic hydrogen. And we can go from the ground state where n equals 1 right up to uh, the, the electrons basically escaping the atom and making it an ion. Uh, and as we look at all the things that could uh, maybe drop down to the, uh, the ground state, we could have things that move from this uh, n equals 2 uh, down to the ground state, or perhaps n equals 3, or 4, or 5. We can also look at the various energy uh, changes that we might have down to the n equals 2. And also the various energy changes for n equals 3. And because every time we have an energy change, uh, we have an associated frequency, or therefore wavelength, of light emitted. And effectively, um, what we have is when the... Uh, Electrons move down by a huge amount, we get uh, ultraviolet light given off. So there's some ultraviolet, uh, some ultraviolet photons being given off uh, at this part of the spectrum. Uh, in the middle part, they aren't as energetic. The energy changes aren't as big, so the frequency isn't as big. Uh, and therefore, we maybe have visible light given off at this part of the spectrum. Uh, and finally, these are fairly small energy changes over here, so we might have infrared uh, light or infrared photons which are given off um, and effectively uh, you can only have certain values of photons given off and therefore certain values of wavelengths of light which are emitted by hydrogen. What we can actually do is look at the various colours of this, uh, uh, these emitted photons and what I have here isn't actually hydrogen this is helium uh, and what we can look at are the various wavelengths of light which are emitted. And effectively we have the visible spectrum here going from the violet end right through to the red. Uh, and what we call this is an emission spectrum. So this emission spectrum shows a certain wavelengths of photons uh, which are given off by helium. As it's excited we might have a load of helium gas which is really hot, full of lots of energy. And as the electrons uh, drop back down to the various sort of ground states and the lower energy levels, they emit certain wavelengths of light. Uh, and for every single element it has its own particular emission spectra. How do we see this? Well, we see all the kind of colours sort of mixed together. So we might see the, the yellow adding to the red, to the green, to the blue and the violet. And what we might see is white light. So how do we actually get the spectra? Well, what we have to do is we need to shine that white light through a diffraction grating. And what this does is it splits up that rainbow of colour and really shows us the, the certain frequencies of light that make it up. However, this emission spectra also has its kind of twin brother. Uh, and this isn't so much things being emitted, but this is things being absorbed. Now, we've already seen on the model that um, when an electron drops down, it uh, emits a certain photon of a certain frequency. Well, in actual fact, when this goes up to the next level, it only emits or only absorbs certain frequencies of radiation. So this one here maybe uh, might emit uh, a photon with a blue wavelength which goes out, but in order for it to get up to the next level it has to emit a blue photon. A red photon, a green photon, these don't have quite the right energy, it's very very picky about who it chooses. So this photon comes in, it excites the electron and it moves up an energy level. Uh, and therefore what we have is not just an emission spectra, but we also can see an absorption spectra. An emission spectra is given out by something, but an absorption spectra is when you maybe have a cool gas and you shine a load of white light through it. Uh, so white light being made up of all of the colours of the rainbow. And what we find is that only certain uh, colours or only certain uh, photons are actually absorbed by uh, whatever we've got. And, and what we see is like uh, kind of, I guess, like an anti-emission spectrum. And we see a black line where no light kind of gets through. So we find that actually, um, certain frequencies of green light are absorbed and therefore there's like a basic a bit of a gap in the spectra and uh, this is really really important okay this some uh, this gives us evidence for the fact that um, what's inside stars that there is actually helium inside stars it gives us evidence for the fact that the galaxy uh, and the universe in fact are not the galaxy but the whole universe is expanding and it's because what we can do is by looking at starlight we can start to see the various chemical elements uh, that make up the kind of the outer atmosphere of those stars so an absorption spectra is where uh, certain frequencies of light are missing because they're being absorbed by that element. So uh, we know that helium absorbs uh, certain uh, yellow, uh, red and green and sort of different frequencies like that. Whereas when it emits stuff, it only emits the same things. And this is because the frequencies which are absorbed by the electrons to move up the levels are the same as uh, the photons given out when these things uh, drop back down to their ground state. So that's what quantum physics really leads on to, basically work on stars and rainbows, and how by knowing about what's inside the atom on the very, very smallest scale, we can then start to investigate things on the very largest scale in our universe.